Welcome to another Adventures in Random presentation. I am Kador, and joining me today is... Integer. 1 plus 1 equals 3. That's probably correct somewhere. It's and correct in anatomy. I was terrible at anatomy. That's that's the thing where you study the stars, right? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll just go with it. And today, I want to talk to you about nutrition. Well, Integer, it seems today that many people are still lacking in their chemistry of their food and nutrition. Are you talking about diets? Yes, that dirty, dirty D word. Nah. Or supplements. Is that a clue as to what your body actually does with those things? Is supplements the one where they take the pills? Pills, energy drinks, protein bars, energy bars. You throw the word energy on anything and they'll buy into it. Energy water, energy food, energy energy. I think I'd like to try some energy energy. <laughs> Hear that, marketers? Get on it. <laughs> energy energy, brought to you by the electric company. It comes at twice the price of normal energy and does nothing extra. You can credit it to Edison. Don't, don't. Don't do that. <laughs> but No, seriously, don't do that. <laughs> but Edison steals the credit for everything. Well, he's not alive <laughs> now, is he? He like, doesn't have a patent on energy, energy. We can have that one. We can, we, we can, we can turn a profit off of energy, energy. All right, credit, <laughs> credit that to us. You can find us at, what's your email? Adventuresandrandom at gmail.com that you can find us right there. <laughs> but from what I gather from the sales of herbal supplements, diet foods, and purportedly healthy foods, and that healthy is with quotation marks, even though you can't see me doing my fingers, I think many people are under the impression that food works like the Mario principle. If they eat the right thing, they can throw fireballs or gain super strength. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Sorry to all you um, bodybuilders out there. Mushrooms will not give you bigger muscles. Well, some mushrooms, but that's only because they have a high protein value. Yep, though generally not a complete protein. You'll need to pair it with a few other things. However, your body actually works closer to the principle of full metal alchemist. It breaks it down into something and transforms it into something it needs. Generally energy. It likes energy. And sugar. Yeah, I really like sugar. <laughs> Why do pe so many people feel the need to complicate food? Because if you complicate it, then you sound smart when you make it. True. Now, I'm not making a dig at any molecular gastronomist out there, because that's science. Science can be as complex as you want. Food should be simple from the process of preparing it yourself and at the very least, eating it, because food should be fun. Food is awesome. It's tasty. It's glorious. It should be fun and simple. Molecular gastronomy is the study of food at its basis principles. Yep. And, this... and, how to, and how to change them with the use of outside help. They're the kind of thing that makes a cube that looks like jello, but tastes like a bacon ice cream sundae. Because science. That's exactly right, actually. <laughs> I think it's awesome because I love experimentation with food. I'm just easily get bored with math. I never said you had to know exactly how much liquid nitrogen you use for your ice cream. <laughs> now, did I? Yes, to all those listening, you can make ice cream with liquid nitrogen. Although, always wear gloves. Always wear gloves, and I think if you use too much or too little, you throw off the texture of your ice cream. They'll learn. Your stomach breaks down your food, and then from there decides what you need. If you need energy, it makes it into energy. If you need muscle, it makes it into muscle. If you don't need energy and you don't need muscle, and you have a whole lot extra, it turns it into that uh, extra layer of budge on your stomach, or wherever it decides to put it. That's based on DNA, and we're not getting into that, because that's a whole can of genetic worms. Generally <laughs> not. No, not worms. They're pretty well all the same. You know, somewhere out there is probably someone who spent his life studying worms. It's going to write you a very scathing letter now. 
<laughs> you can find me at integer475 <laughs> at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic one bit. That would be awesome. Yes, I, I'm sure he finds the molecular study of worms fascinating. Oh, it's not that. It's just be, it'd be cool <laughs> to have someone tell me I was wrong about worms. Are, are, you, are you just looking for attention? Ever have that, like, random person go to the Facebook page and just, you know, you don't expect them to put anything because it seemed like a, like a rhetorical post, and yet they do? Yes. Yeah. It'd be like that. You know, I randomly said, hey, all worms are the same. So, for someone to go and comment on that, that'd be kind of cool. Kind of would. What are carbohydrates? Well, they're generally found in sugars, because they're sugars. And then when plants don't need all the sugar they make, they can convert it into interesting stuff like starch and cellulose. For those of you who don't know, cellulose is fiber. And humans can't exactly break it down in their stomach. Because generally the things that can create stuff you can't normally create, like nitrogen, or break down stuff you can't normally break down, like cellulose, has a whole culture of special bacteria living inside them to do it for them. Yeah. Like, I don't know, deer. Cows. Cows spend an extensive amount of time chewing the same grass over and over again just to break down everything you need. Our immediate reaction to biting the grass is, uh, let's go find something more interesting, because your brain already knows it's a waste of time to chew on that for very long. Yeah. I'm... I wish you hadn't brought up the cows thing. <laughs> Why not? They chew it, swallow it, spit it up, chew it some more, swallow it, spit it up, chew it up, swallow it, spit it up, chew it up some more, swallow it a last time, and then it comes out the other end. Yep, after it passes through four stomachs to get every bit of energy they can out of it. Yeah. But Ooh. can you imagine how tasty that would have to be after the third time of spitting that up? They just thinking about it is like, ugh. They're, they're eating grass to start with, so they probably don't have a sense of taste. <laughs> <laughs> that explains why they licked the window on the cars. <laughs> I'm serious, you have any idea how weird it is to go out there in the morning and have, like, tongue prints across your windshield? <laughs> Body likes carbohydrates. They keep you fueled. But if you treat them improperly, you could end up a blue fuzzy monster shouting, Cookies! Cookie, 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 nom, 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 cookie, 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 cookie. As you attack a plate of them like a lion on a gazelle. That'd be voracious. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> and even uh, Mr. C him himself, I'm not going to say his name for possible copyright reasons, has learned to switch out a few of the cookies for some healthier carbs like fruit and eggplant. So that he could enjoy the occasional cookie without coming across as a heroin addict. So are you going to let him up it, outsmart you? That's right. <laughs> Eat more... What's that stuff I put peanut butter on with raisins on it? Bread? No. Celery! Eat more <laughs> celery! Can't remember the name of it. All the green stuff looks the same. Because you're colorblind? He probably, probably <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's time to talk about lipids. Specifically a class of lipids known as fats. Now, don't run off. It's not a scary word. Lipids, uh, fats are found in things like butter and peanut butter and some plants and animals. But due to cultural con connotations, many of you are probably fleeing at the sight of the word fat sight or sound of the word fat. Like it's a giant blob going to consume all in its bath. Fat, 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 fat. Only do that with trans fats. They are the twin clone Hitlers of the fat world. Their creation is something unholy. Two varieties, however, are essential to the body. There are the omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. What does omega-3 and omega-6 mean? It means that the kink on the chain that denotes an unsaturated fat occurs at either the third position or the sixth position in the chain. Those are found in fish, in, the, in case anybody else didn't understand the chain. Well, 
Omega-3 is found in fish oil, algae oil, egg oil, squid oil, krill oil, some plant oils like flaxseed oil, and then the oils of some berries. But it, the sites I found didn't really get into specifics on that, so I wouldn't count on finding the berries with it. Flaxseed is a decent one, though. I've seen that at many Mega Barts. Yeah, I've, I've seen it too. And then Omega-6 you probably get plenty of because it's found in poultry, eggs, avocados, nuts, vegetable oils, and lots of other things. I'd honestly be surprised if we had an Omega-6 deficit. Actually, many nutritionists think that we may have too much Omega-6 in relation to Omega-3. So look for the Omega-3s. They're your friends. What he's saying is if what you're eating, Nutrition Facts, has protein and it's not a fish, a flax seed, <laughs> or a berry, it has omega-6. Most likely has omega-6. We don't want to get too broad on the generalizations here. Yeah. Even well, though your name is a broad generalization. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about proteins, the most complex of our compounds. And a protein is any of various complex nitrogen-containing substances that consist of chains of amino acids and are present in all living cells. They're essential for human diet. That's because, uh, molecularly speaking or chemically speaking, however you want to say it. I think it's chemically. Chemically is probably more accurate, but molecularly was the first one to come to mind for some reason. I blame you and your molecular gastronomy. But the nitrogen part is actually what's important in proteins in addition to amino acids because if you look at the chemical structure of both fats and carbs it pretty well uses the same three things uh, hydrogen oxygen and carbon just in different forms which is why fats are actually a decent source of energy because if you keep your carbs a little bit lower and just keep them to stuff like fruits and veggies and maybe the occasional cookie because I, I wasn't kidding with that uh devouring it like a lion your brain really really likes carbs and if you go too long without it even if you're getting plenty of energy you'll go on what's called a carb craving where you'll just want to chow down on anything that looks like a loaf of bread pastas bread cookies cakes you might even find yourself snorting straight sugar out of the bag yeah don't try flour though <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't try a flower. <laughs> if you put it on your tongue long enough, it will eventually taste sweet, but that'll be a painful few minutes while waiting for that to get to the mildly sweet taste, because it's... It's not sugar sweet, and it's a long and arduous process. Because it has to be broken down in the stomach a little bit faster to get to the actual sugar stage. I used that word right. Arduous. Pretty well. But, as we mentioned before, some plants are actually able to produce nitrogen. And, interestingly enough, they are in the legume family, which contains stuff like beans and peas and alfalfa and lentils and the delicious peanut. Peanuts are delicious. That uh, contain certain bacteria in them that actually put, that can convert nitrogen in the air for their use and put them into the ground. And all of those things actually contain some amount of the protein necessary for human survival. Because there's 20 of them we need and 9 of them we can't produce ourselves. And I would give you a list of those, but the names look so bizarrely similar and if you pull up a thing of them, they're so often grouped together in many plants or animals that you probably can't distinguish them apart unless you're actually looking at the molecular structure. If, or, you, if you're looking for a solid hairy thing to eat for a good source of just about any of this, go for peanut butter. It has peanuts from the protein family. It also has sugar in it from the carbohydrates. It has an egg in it, which is a complete protein, and from the omega-6 list. Peanut butter has egg in it? It has egg in it. That's the binding agent. Ah. Well, because many of the home recipes of peanut butter I've done use honey as the binding agent. Mm. And it's you get the protein from the fact that 
like I said, legumes like peanuts contain a large chunk of the nine you need. And any that's missing, you can cover up by pairing it with bread or many plants like wheat and grains. So like beans and rice or peanut butter and bread or whatever. Well, Though it may, I don't know about the mass produced bread, if it contains what you need, but. You go, go for wheat. White bread, the white bread that's mass produced only has about two of the ones you need and uh, but wheat bread has just about all of it provided you get the good wheat bread because many wheat breads you'll find are actually just white bread with caramel color added to it to think make you think it's right so that could have changed recently but take a look at your ingredients list just in case and when in doubt see if you can just go to a bakery and get your loaf of wheat bread but if that's not available to you, just do a little research. Remember a few years back, though, when uh, two or three of the nameless peanut butter factories had to shut down for a salmonella scare? It's because the eggs for their binding agent in their peanut butter went bad. Ah. Now let's give a quick note on what your body does with this stuff and the calorie needs. As a quick note, if you're just looking for a guide, if the calories you burn, just kind of moving around or do whatever you do in the day, are equal to the calories you ingest from your food, your weight will stay the same. If your calories burned are greater than the calories ingested, you'll lose weight as it starts burning it for whatever. And it'll try to start with fat down to a certain percent. It likes to keep like 5 or 10 percent body fat fat. I don't remember the exact details. And then it'll start burning muscle with the fat, which is why they generally suggest you do some muscle building strength exercises while losing weight so you can keep the muscles at least maintained. Because you can't really build it on a deficit. But if your calories burned are less than the calories ingest, just start gaining weight. And what you're doing at the time will determine how you gain that weight. If you're doing a lot of bodybuilding, muscle building, it'll <coughs> use it to repair and build up your muscles. And if you're just kind of laying around on the couch, you'll build that uh, beer gut, your extra spare tire. And so beer gut is a misnomer because if I remember correctly, beer is just kind of empty calories. There's not a whole lot. Yeah, not, not much to it. Although it does have some plant stuff in it. Yeah. So it's probably got some amount of sugar, but I, I, you'd have to look at the details to be sure, but I, I think the act of drinking the beer is probably burning enough calories. Unless you're like really, really chugging it, like someone's holding you upside down as you guzzle down a whole gallon of the stuff. Then you might start starting to get into a gain, but don't quote me on that. By the way, back to the liquid nitrogen thing, don't try that at home, or at least not by yourself. Because if something bad happens, that would be bad. This has been Adventures in Random Presents Stuff You Might Need to Know Nutrition. I didn't say about food. Alright, well anyway, this has been Integer. And Kador. And we have brought to you a very healthy diet. And established that peanut butter is your go-to food for just about most of your nutrition needs. That is exactly <laughs> right. Have a nice day. Ciao.